have discussed uh, uh, two problems. Just I have turned the procedure. Today we will solve both the problems. Means uh, this uh, second problem on deflection and one problem on resolution. Okay. Uh, we will solve both these uh, two problems. Okay. All of you read the second problem. All of you read the second problem. Finished students. Have you finished writing the problem? Okay. Just go through the problem. Estimate the deflection under service loads for the composite T beam of example one means previous uh, problem. Uh, if the modulus of elasticity of concrete in the precast beam and cast in situ slab are 35 and 28 kilonewton per meter square respectively. Uh, all the data is same only, but uh, in the previous problem, a single modulus of elasticity for the beam and the slab was given. Okay, that is 35 kilonewton per uh, mm square, it was uh, given, correct? In this problem, where is it? That data. Cable line 33. Uh, yeah, here it is given. Correct. Right? Here it is given. 35 kilonewton per mm square was the given data. For for both the precast and in situ cast elements. Precast and in situ cast in situ elements means for beam and the slab. It was same. But in this problem, okay. But in this problem. Uh, it is different. The modulus of elasticity of the beam and the slab are different. For, for beam it is 35, for slab it is 28 kilonewton per mm square. Uh, mm square it is not meter square, mm square. Uh, therefore, uh, what will be the procedure? Let us see. For the if, if different modulus of elasticity is given in the problem, first you need to find the ratio of uh, Ings modulus of uh, 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 a model of elasticity of the beam to that of slab. Okay, first you find that. First you find the model ratio of models of elasticity to of a beam to that of a slab.
let me solve the problem solution okay if different things model is given then you find ratio of modulus of elasticity elasticity alpha which is equal to ec of beam to the tub Young's modulus of concrete of slab okay so for beam it is given as 35 for slab it is given as 28 if you calculate the ratio you will get 1.25 as a ratio okay see if uh, the Young's modulus of beam and the slab are different then uh, finding the moment of inertia is different okay let us find that moment of inertia <coughs> it is a t beam write the figure of the t beam The width of the slab given is 400 and depth is 40 mm. Whatever the data was there for the previous problem, same data. Okay, same data. You can see. Uh, here I will show. The same data. Okay, 200 mm deep and 100 mm wide. This is for beam and uh, slab is 400 mm wide and 40 mm thick. Same uh, dimensions I am writing here. 40 mm thick and uh, depth of beam is 200 width of beam is 100 okay for this we need to locate the centroid we need to locate the centroid let the g be the centroid of the t section okay let g be the centroid of the t section First, you find the centroid. Let us find uh, centroid first. For that, we have the formula. We work with the two rectangular elements. Therefore, centroid becomes what? A1 Y1 plus A2 Y2 divided by A1 plus A2. Okay. We will find centroid with respect to the bottom fiber. Okay. We will find centroid with respect to the bottom fiber. Therefore, A1 becomes equal to A1 means if you assume uh, this has component 1, this has component 2. So, area of uh, this uh, flange portion becomes 400 into 40. Uh, it is 16,000 mm square. Correct? And Y1. Okay, we are finding centroid with respect to the bottom fiber. Okay, with respect to the bottom fiber. Distance of center of uh, flange from the bottom fiber, how much it is? It is 200 plus 40 divided by 2. 200 plus 40 divided by 2. What is the answer you get? 220 mm. Okay. Then A2 means area of this beam or rib is equal to 100 into 200. So it is 20,000. mm square then what about y2 y2 is half of depth that is 200 by 2 we will get 100 mm okay y2 will be equal to 100 mm 
you can find the centroid now tell me the answer so before that uh, let, uh, before calculating very important uh, i'll tell you a1 y1 a1 y1 is equal to 16000 into 220 plus a2 y2 20000 into 100 okay into okay into 1.25 into 1.25 you need to multiply what is this 1.25 it is the ratio of Young's modulus of uh, uh, beam to that of Young's modulus of uh, uh, it is the ratio of modulus of elasticity of the concrete of the beam to that of modulus of elasticity of the concrete of the slab okay therefore for slab no issues okay for beam ec beam equal to what 1.25 times of ec slab that is why while substituting the values for slab you need to multiply by 1.25 this is important remember so when different modulus of elasticity is given you need to multiply the ratio of Young's modulus of concrete of the beam to that of Young's modulus of concrete of the slab okay this is only the important step okay four divided by four divided by again 16000 is the area plus a2 is 20000 into 1.25 again 20000 into 1.25 because of different mod uh, uh, modulus of uh, elasticities we need to uh, compensate uh, we, we need to balance the cell my elastic moduli by multiplying the ratio okay that is why we are multiplying here so therefore what is the answer y bar is equal to students what is the answer tell me the answer please Tell me the answer, anyone of you? Darshita? Kruti, tell me the answer. Anyone of you tell me the answer, please? Sumit Kumar. Yes. Tell me the answer, students. So, one forty-six point eight two, sir. Yes. How much? One forty-six point eight two. Yes. One forty-six point eight two mm. This is from uh, bottom fiber, from soffit. Okay. That is uh, YB. We call it as YB means distance from base of the uh, section. 146.82 mm okay from the subject means yb i denoted it as yb which is nothing but uh, the distance from base of the section if you want to find distance from uh, here you mentioned that uh, distance from the base it is 146.82 146.82 this is yb if you want to find uh, from the top fiber that is yt you can find it overall depth minus that 146.82 if you do you will get the distance from top fiber yt will be equal to overall distance is 40 plus 200 
minus 146.82. How much will get? Tell me. Ninety three point one eight, sir. Ninety three point one eight mm. Okay, you mentioned this distance also in the figure. What is equal to ninety three point one eight mm? Okay, from top fiber. This is from bottom fiber. Okay, now we have located the distance of the centroid. Uh, you can find moment of inertia now. Okay, you can find moment of inertia now. Therefore, moment of inertia, write the side line as moment of inertia. We have the formula for finding the moment of inertia. That is, I is equal to BDQ by 12 plus AH square is the formula. H square is the formula. Now A1, A2, H1, H2 you find. Okay. With this corresponding to the rectangle 1 and the rectangle 2. A1 is equal to, we have already determined 16,000 mm square. 16,000 mm square. Then A2 is equal to, 20,000 yes it is 20,000 mm square then h1 and h2 you find h1 and h2 you find what is h1 corresponding to the rectangle 1 distance of centroid of rectangle 1 g1 to the top centroid of the whole figure how much it will be from top, from top fiber, distance of center of whole figure is 93.18 minus this 20. If you do, you will get distance between these two centers, G1 and the G. So it is 93.18 minus 40 divided by 2. 93.18 minus 40 divided by 2. So it becomes 20. Uh, answer will be 73.18 mm. Similarly, you find uh, H2 means distance of center of uh, rectangle 2 component 2 G2 to the top center of the whole figure center of the whole figure okay so from bottom fiber distance of center of whole figure is 146.82 mm okay and distance of center of uh, the rectangle 2 is at a distance of 100 mm so 146.82 minus this 100 will give distance between G2 and the G okay therefore it is 146.82 146.82 minus 100 or 200 divided by 2. Tell me the answer. It will, it will be 46.82, correct. 46.82 mm. Okay. Now you can find moment of inertia. Therefore, I is equal to BD cube divided by 12 for the rectangle 1. B is 400 into 40 cube divided by 12 plus a h square a is 16000 into h1 square is 73.18 square plus for rectangle 2 b is 100 mm depth is 200 cube divided by 12 okay plus a h square a is 20000 into h square is h2 square 46.82 square into very important again you need to multiply by that ratio 1.25 important remember when different elastic model i are given you need to balance by multiplying the ratio okay tell me the answer now i is equal to How much you'll get?
Tell me the answer, students. Sir, so 2.09 and 10 power 9. 2.09, huh? Yes, sir. Here, uh, I got a slight different answer. 2.26 I got. Uh, can you uh, calculate once again? Yes, sir. Others, you also calculate, please. Here I got 226 into 10 power 6. Answer 226 into 10 power 6 mm4. Sir, I'm getting same answer, sir. Same answer you're getting? Yes, sir. Let me check the calculation once again. Sorry, here. Sorry, sorry. Okay, we have to multiply this 1.25 to this whole term for this whole AH square. What we have done is that is why we are getting different answer. Okay, for this whole term, we have to multiply. Okay, what we have done is we have multiplied only for this second term. Okay. For full h square, if you have to multiply. Now I think uh, you will get the answer. Uh, check it now. So 225.9 and 10 power 6. Yes, yes. Now it's correct. I'll round it up to 226. Into 10 power 6 mm. Okay. So like this, uh, centroid and moment of inertia has to be calculated by considering the ratio of Young's modulus of beam to that of uh, slab. Okay. Here we need to multiply 1.25 at numerator and denominator with respect to the Beam calculations here also with respect to the beam calculation for AH square term we need to multiply. Remember this. Okay. Now we can calculate the deflection, total deflection. Before getting calculating the deflection, we need to calculate deflection due to the dead load, deflection due to the uh, weight of the slab on the beam, deflection to the pre-stress, and deflection due to the live load. Okay. Knowing all the deflections, you can calculate the total deflection. So first one. 
prop for proper construction right case a for proper construction for proper construction okay for proper construction deflection due to dead load first one first one deflection due to self weight ah ayo kun deflection due to self weight of beam okay deflection due to self weight of the beam let me go to the previous problem okay this is the problem okay we are solving this same problem only with but ink modulus are different okay for unproper construction we have calculated the deflection due to dead load of the beam where moment of inertia corresponding to the beam was taken okay moment of inertia corresponding to the beam was taken here how much it is i for pre cast section how much it is 667 into 10 power 5 mm square okay but the moment of inertia of the composite section it was given as 1948 into 10 power 5 mm raised to 4 this is the case where both the ink modulus are same okay for composite section as the ink modulus values are given are different we have calculated the uh, ink modulus by using that ratio with that we got it as 226 into 10 power 6 okay but with respect to the beam element alone this ink modulus sorry this moment of inertia remains the same okay with respect to the the individual beam element this moment of inertia remains the same that is 687 into 10 power 5 mm raised to 4 this remains the same with respect to the composite section okay with respect to the composite section moment of inertia will be different that we have calculated just now for the problem okay now deflection due to the dead load of the beam we have calculated moment of inertia is same only so the answer will be same okay what are the deflection due to dead load of the beam for you got for this problem same deflection you get because ink this moment of inertia is also same dead load is same everything is same okay dead load of the beam is Uh, self weight of the beam is same everything is same you will get the same answer then deflection due, deflection of a precast beam due to self weight of the slab here also what is what is the moment of inertia we, we, we utilized we utilized 667 into 10 power 5 means moment of inertia of the beam only we have utilized so this answer also same this step is also same okay this step is also same then precessing uh, deflection due to precessing force okay deflection due to precessing force while calculating here also we have utilized moment of inertia of beam only this also remains the same okay this also this value also remains the same only the change is here while calculating more deflection due to lie load okay deflection due to lie load moment of inertia of composite section we have utilized okay here it is 1948 into 10 power 5 mm raised to 4 but in the Uh, next problem what uh, whatever we are solving it is 226 into 10 power 5 mm mm raised to 4 therefore up to here up to here the procedure is same calculation is same b b 8 semester okay up to here the procedure is same only the calculation is different at at this step deflection due to lay load okay what i will do i will copy the same answers i am not going to repeat the calculation once again deflection due to dead load is 1.67 deflection due to uh, slab weight on the beam is 1.34 okay deflection due to precess is 5.67 wherever you have used okay moment of inertia of beam alone there you will get the same answer when wherever you are uh, using moment of inertia of the composite section then only the calculation will changes okay Uh, these values remains the same only this moment of inertia value changes it becomes 226.10 power 6 is that clear for you all students is that clear you have any doubts any doubts 
Okay, if you need any clarification, you can ask. I will copy the same answers now, 1.67 mm. Okay, second step, deflection of, deflection of recast beam due to self weight of cast in situ slab. Okay, this also remains the same. That is delta SL is equal to 1.34 mm. The answers are similar to the answers of previous problem only. So you can write a note as refer previous problem. Okay. Okay, and deflection due to pre-stress, a pre-stressing force, pre-stressing force, delta PS is equal to the same value that is minus 5.67 mm. Okay, only the change is in the last step, fourth step. Okay, that is deflection due to lie load. Deflection due to lie load. Okay, therefore, delta lie load is equal to. 5 by 384 okay into wq l raised to 4 divided by ec into ix ec into ix therefore Delta lie load is equal to 5 by 384 into lie load on the beam is given in the problem. It is given as 3.2. In the problem, it is given 3.2 Newton per mm into length of the beam is given as 5 meter, that is 5000 raised to 4 divided by EC into IX. EC, Young's modulus of beam, you will substitute or Young's modulus of slab, you will substitute here. Which one has to be substituted here? Here we need to substitute Young's modulus of concrete of beam that is 28. Okay. EC of beam. Okay. Because what we have done is while calculating this moment of inertia, you no, know, while calculating the moment of inertia. We have compensated uh, or we have balanced this things modulus of uh, uh, we have balanced this moment of inertia of uh, a beam uh, by multiplying with that ratio 1.25. That is why we have to substitute things modulus of concrete of beam only. Okay, and IX will be 226. Okay, not the 1948. 226 into 10 power 6. By this, we get deflection due to lie load. Tell me the answer. 411 5.30, sir. 411. Uh, here, uh, you need to make the conversion uh, here before that. Right? This is mm square, okay? You change this. This is mm square. Uh, EC of uh, slab or beam we go to 35 kilonewton per mm square equal 35 into 10 power 3 newton per mm square ec of uh, slab is equal to 28 kilonewton per mm square is equal to 
28 into 10 power 3 Newton per square. So here it is 28 into 10 power 3. Divided by 10 power 3, you do well at answer. What is the value? I think yes, 4.11 mm. Okay, 4.11 mm. Now you can calculate the total deflection. Therefore, the total deflection will be delta is equal to deflection due to dead load of the beam. Deflection due to slab load on the beam plus deflection due to processing force plus deflection due to lie load. Deflection due to dead load is 1.67 plus 1.34 minus 5.67. 1.67 1.34 minus 5.67. Deflection due to lie load is 4.11. What is the final deflection? One point four five. Yes, one point four five mm. Okay, so this is the calculation of uh, deflection for propped construction. There is one more case we need to calculate uh, deflection for unpropped uh, construction. B. So the, uh, now we have calculated for unpropped construction. Sorry, unpropped construction. Now. For proper construction, calculation, deflection for proper construction. Okay, deflection for proper construction. So, while finding deflection for proper construction, I'll go to the previous problem. I'll go to the previous problem. So while calculating the deflection for proper construction, uh, while calculating deflection due to the slab load on the beam, we have taken moment of inertia of the full section, moment of inertia of the composite section, composite section. Okay. For unpropped construction, we have taken moment of inertia of only the beam, 667. But for proper construction, while calculating the deflection due to the slab load on the beam, you need to calculate, you need to take moment of inertia of the composite section because it will act as a whole, it will, it will act as a monolithic section, that is why. Okay. Here it is 1948 into 10 power 5, but in this problem it is 226 into 10 power 6. Okay, 226 into 10 power 6, and you need to uh, take uh, exponents of concrete below, right? In case of In case of proper construction, proper construction, the beam and slab is considered as a composite section. A composite section. Okay, means such a, a moment of inertia of the T section has to be taken. Therefore, deflection due to slab load on the beam is equal to 5 by 384 into WSL L raised to 4 whole divided by EC into I composite okay is equal to pi by 384 into 0 0.384 is the slab weight given it is given directly in the problem Zero point three eight four weight of cast in situ slab. Zero point three eight four is given. Same as I am taking. Zero point three eight four into length is five thousand raised to four divided by here also 
Young's modulus of uh, concrete of the slab that is 28 into 10 power 3. into I composite for this I composite we have calculated as 226 into 10 power 6 therefore it is 226 into 10 power 6 so what is the deflection due to slab load on the beam 0.493 sir 0.49 3 mm. Okay. Now we can calculate the total deflection. Therefore, total deflection delta is equal to deflection due to red load plus deflection due to slab load plus deflection due to recessing force plus deflection due to fly load. Deflection due to dead load is same value is 1.67 plus 1.34 1.67 plus 1.34 plus sorry uh, 0.493 for proper construction. 0 0.493 0 0.493 then deflection due to pre-stress is minus right minus 5.67 minus 5.67 plus deflection due to live load it is 4.11 4.11 therefore the total deflection delta is equal to how much 0 0.603 sir is 0 0.603 mm Okay, this completes the problem. The procedure is 90% similar to uh, that of uh, uh, the problem which has uh, same Young's modulus, but wherever uh, the moment of inertia of the composite section is used, no, there we need to uh, Substitute to moment of inertia of the composite section with different elastic moduli that uh, that we have calculated earlier. Okay. Okay. Next is flexural strength of the composite section. Read this problem. This is the last problem of this uh, uh, model fifth model we'll solve this as well Write the problem.
dan read the figure read figure also Okay. So finding the flexural strength, it is 100% similar to that of uh, finding the flexural strength of the normal PSAB. Uh, whatever the procedure we have followed for uh, in model three, you no know, same procedure here. Uh, we will solve this uh, example now. The cross section of a composite beam is of T section having pretension drip 80 mm wide and 240 mm deep. Okay. 
the beam dimensions are given and uh, cast in situ slab of 350 mm wide 350 mm wide and 80 mm thick the thickness of the slab is also given that is written in the figure the pretension beam is reinforced with eight wides of 5 mm diameter with an ultimate tensile strength of 1600 newton per mm square eight number of wides with the fp is equal to 1600 newton per mm square located at 60 mm from the surface of the beam they are located at 60 mm from the surface of the beam see overall depth it is given means depth of uh, flange is given depth of rib is given uh, you, including uh, adding both you will get total depth minus total depth minus so this cover will give effective depth that that we i have calculated as 260 mm okay the compressive strength of the concrete in cast uh, in situ cast and pre cast element is 20 and 40 newton per mm square compressive strengths are given uh, if adequate reinforcement are provided to prevent the shear failure at the interface uh, estimate the flexural strength of the composite section we need to estimate flexural strength of the composite section okay uh, you write all the given data first so all the geometric properties are written in the figure itself here uh, number of bars given is eight number of bars having 5 mm diameter calculate the area pressure sink for steel ap is equal to pi d square by 4 pi into pi square by 4 into eight numbers this is number of pies number of pies what is the area total area you get area pressure sink steel much 157.07 157 correct 157 mm square okay so here uh, the ings uh, modulus values modulus of elasticity values are given c2 means for slab it is 20 and for pre cast element for beam it is 40 that you write below fck for slab fck for slab that is uh, uh, flange fck of flange is equal to 20 newton per mm square and fck for beam nothing but web that is fck of web is equal to 40 newton per mm square and effective depth you can calculate effective depth it is already calculated in the figure let me write it once again total depth is 80 plus 240 minus 60 80 240 minus 60 if you do you will get effective depth that is 260 mm that is effective depth now we need to calculate uh, flexural strength of the flanger section okay for flange section first we need to assume uh, neutral edge is either it lies in the uh, flange or, or or it lies in the web okay what we will do assume neutral axis lies within the flange we will assume that neutral axis lies within the flange because the depth of the beam uh, it is little bit less here that is why when depth of the beam is less then most of the times uh, the neutral axis fall within the flange only that is why what we will do in the step 1 step 1 assume assume neutral axis lies within flange okay that is xu less than df we will assume first okay for that we will check whether it lies within the flange or not for that i'll go to the code book We have table number eleven. It is a pre-tensioned beam. First, you calculate this ratio. AP, FP, divided by BD, FCK. You calculate AP, FP, 
from table 11 from table 11 page number 59 uh. let me check that's 59 page number 59 59 is 1343 1980 uh, the APFP shared by BDFCK is equal to APFP divided by B means width of flange. Okay, we have assumed it lies within the flange into D into FCK of what flange again. Okay, because we have assumed depth of total axis lies within the flange. That is why AP is equal to FP value is given 1600. Okay, in the given data, you can write FP is equal to. 1600 newton per mm square ultimate tensile strength uh, ap we have calculated it is 157 157 into ap is 1600 divided by width of flange is 400 uh, sorry it is 350 mm and effective depth is 260 350 into 260 is the effective depth into fck of flange is 20 mm 20 newton per mm square into 20 so what is the ratio then point 0.138 0 0.138 means uh, you can round it up to 0 0.14 okay now corresponding to corresponding to AP, FP, BD, FCK is equal to 0 0.14. You calculate uh, XU by D value for pre-tensioning case. Okay. For 0 0.10, it is 0 0.217. For 0 0.15, it is 0 0.326. For 0 0.14, you calculate. Do the interpolation. Tell me the answer. XU by D value. From table 11. From table 11. For pre-tensioned case. In the problem, it is said that it is pre-tensioned pre beam. Pre-tensioned for AP, FP divided by BD, FCK is equal to 0 0.10 corresponding XU by D was, how much it was? 0 0.217. Uh, we need for 0 0.14 value x u by d is equal to we need the answer for 0 0.15 also we know the answer x u by d value we know how much it is 0 0.326 do the interpolation by interpolation x u by d is equal to tell me the answer Yes. X U by D is equal to do the interpolation. Zero point three zero four, sir. Yes, zero point three zero four. Okay. Now you can calculate the depth of neural axis. Effective depth is known x u y. Effective depth is uh, two sixty is equal to point three two 
304. By this, you will get the depth of neutral axis. How much? Seventy nine. Seventy nine mm. Okay. This is the depth of neutral axis. Seventy nine mm. You just check the depth of flange. Depth of flange is eighty mm, but depth of neutral axis at lies lies at a distance of seventy nine mm from top fiber. Therefore, depth of neutral axis lies within the flange. Our assumption is correct. Okay. Here you can you can write which is less than eighty mm. That is depth of flange. Hence, hence, neutral axis lies within flange. Our assumption is correct. Assumption is correct. Okay. Now you can calculate. Uh, uh, Moment of resistance, moment of resistance. To calculate the moment of inertia uh, resistance, we have the formula M is equal to APU AP into D minus 0.4 to XU. D is known, depth of neutral axis XU is known, 79. AP is known, APU you need to calculate, APU you can calculate using same table, table, table number 11 only. Yes, ma'am. Sir, what is the name? Ah, ma'am. Okay. Uh, first, you first calculate uh, APU by 0 0.87 AP. Okay. The value by referring this table. We have already collected this ratio, correct? Okay. Now, to calculate APU from table 11, from table 11, okay? AS1343 1980 You can calculate AP by AP and AP, AP for AP FP divided by BDFCK. What is the ratio we got? We got this ratio as 0 0.14. 0 0.14 corresponding okay corresponding what is this fpu by 0 0.87 fp corresponding fpu divided by 0 0.87 fp is equal to just for the table we need for 0 0.14 for 0 0.1 one zero it is one zero point one five it is one obviously for zero point one four it will be one only it will be one only therefore fpu divided by zero point eight seven fp is nothing but uh, ultimate tensor strength that is given how much it is given it is given as thousand six hundred newton per mm square so therefore it is thousand six hundred is equal to one by this you'll get a pu one three nine two sir one three nine two newton per mm square okay now you can calculate moment of resistance using this formula every parameters are known Therefore, the moment of resistance is equal to
therefore moment of resistance is equal to the formula is fpu into fp into d minus 0.4 to xu fpu ultimate moment of resistance is equal to fpu into fp into d minus 0 0.4 to xu which is given in page number 59 is 1343 okay therefore mu is equal to fpu is 1392 into fp value is uh, 1600 into d minus 0.4 to x u d is effective depth how much it was effective depth 260 sir, the AP yes the fp uh, notes only ap and the code ap okay 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 just a minute i'll check with uh, ah, ap only ap only it is i'll change it now AP only. So while writing it has it, uh, the mistake has happened. Okay. AP only. AP into AP into D minus 0.4 to X U. Okay. AP into AP. Okay. Area pressure seems still. It is 157 into 157 into d minus 0.4 d is 260 minus 0 0.42 into xu uh, depth of the axis we got it as uh, how much 79 mm into 79 okay 79 mm into 79 so by this you will get moment of resistance Forty nine point five seven ten power six. Okay. Forty nine point five seven into ten power six Newton millimeter. Or EMU is equal to forty nine point five seven kilonewton meter. Okay. So to this the all problems of model five is over. Okay. Full syllabus of the model 5 is completed and full syllabus of the subject also completed students okay to so this uh, i think my part is over okay next is your part okay whatever the things to be done from my side i have done all the things okay i have solved all the problems okay i have given all the course materials okay each and every uh notes of each model i have shared okay now your part okay you need to put your effort okay you need to gain the knowledge and you have to perform well in your external examination okay see this model for is no it is mix of uh, model 2 model 1 2 and model 3 okay in model 1 you have learned uh, uh, analysis of stresses okay analysis of stresses okay in model 2 you have learned how to find the deflection of the beam in model 3 you learned how to find the pressure strength of the beam okay if you prepare uh, if you are thorough with model 1 2 and 3 then model 5 
it is very easy okay some minor changes are uh, some minor changes will come that you can incorporate just uh, referring to the notes okay but uh, this model why now it is newly introduced in your uh, 17 scheme see you you are the first batch for 17 scheme uh, don't know what what may be the type of question uh, they're going to ask in the examination so my suggestion is model 5 you can attempt uh, if you prepare for model 1 2 and 3 you can attempt no problem but uh, my suggestion is to go for model 1 to 4 you read okay you prepare for model 1 to 4 model 5 just have a look on model 5 okay if you have sufficient time you thoroughly study all the models that is well and good it's very good if you study all the five models if you are lagging with uh, the time then my suggestion is to go for model 1 to 4 if you prepare for model 1 to 4 you can just have a look on model 5 you just uh, keep in mind where are all the changes in the calculations will come uh, you can directly uh, 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 solve the problems of model 5 even if it is asked in the uh, examination okay so tomorrow uh, also i have one class there uh, i'll try to re uh, revise uh, uh, i'll just glance all the models okay uh, in the tomorrow's class uh, do you need any clarifications with respect to subject students Students, with respect to the subject, do you need any help or any inputs from my side? I'll be ready. Okay, it's very easy subject. See this PAC subject now. If you understand the concept properly, okay, if you understand the concept properly, you will get out of out marks in this subject. Okay, understanding the concept is very important and you should be perfect in doing the calculations. You should not commit any mistakes in doing the calculations. Understanding the concept is very important. Okay. So prepare well for your examinations. Okay. I'll take the attendance.